Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stromer. And we love to uh, get our garden going. And by the way, this is brought to you by Bayard Vance. Better science, better results, more than 100 years of genius to make you more successful in the garden. So let's get to it. Let's talk about things that you can be growing and eating right now in April. Because this is the time. And no matter where you live, um, there, and no matter what size garden you have, there are certain things that you can plant right now. So are you ready? Yeah. Lettuce. Guess what I, get, yeah, lettuce. Lettuce. Okay, go. So have you started growing your lettuce? I have not, but I'll tell you what I have started growing. What, what's that? Tomatoes. That's right, tomatoes. I love them. They're, they're showing up. All the little starter plants are showing up in the big box stores. They're everywhere. I love the smell of the tomato plant. I eat them like crazy when they start to har- when I harvest them late in, late in the summertime, and I make the marinara from heaven above. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm doing right now. The tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. Planting in early spring will not only give you some fresh vegetables, whether it's tomatoes or lettuce or whatever, but the the idea is the cool season vegetables they're going to thrive during the warm days and the cool nights of spring, and it's the summer heat you know, that causes the plants to quickly set the seeds and it ruins the crops. So if you start the vegetables earlier by planting inside in the late winter and then transplanting them out to the garden in the spring, have you done that before? I have not, no. No, because, because you know, we're fortunate enough to live in this climate where we can do this. But for the folks if, if in the was, Midwest, If it's yeah. colder, you can yeah. be doing that right now. But lettuce, lettuces and leaf vegetables, they grow best during cool temperatures. So I had a lettuce, you know, it's got to be Have ready. you done the lettuce? I haven't. I, I'm going to do this. I want I've th- done the lettuce and, and it's it's tricky? amazing. It's not tricky. It's just, it, it's kind of amazing that you can peel it away every night and get your salad going. But you got to be careful because, you know, it's susceptible to to pests, right? And to rabbits yeah, and, and critters. And you don't want to be spraying a bunch of chemicals mm-hmm. on, on lettuces because it's going to be difficult to get the stuff off before you eat it. So, you, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you've got the optimal conditions where you don't have to use the chemicals if you don't need them. Mm-hmm. You know? So you want to plant the lettuce and the leaf vegetables as soon as the, the ground is, is uh, ready and spring ready. Um, this is also a good time for broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I boy, I love the broccoli. I've done the broccoli before. It's, it's it works well. Really? It's successful. Yeah. Has it been big? I mean, well, like it's huge? just so rewarding when you when you get a, a nice head of broccoli and you bring it in. You go look what I've grown, kids. This is broccoli. Isn't this amazing? And they're like, Oh my god, how did you do that? And it's just like one of those things that you become a rock star gardener. So did you? You mean a Brock star? Brock star. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Did it. you did you plant this in a raised bed? It was in a container. I did not. I did not no. do a raised bed. I just did it in the garden bed, and it worked. It worked great. It's incredible. So the good news is, if you're in a colder area, these guys tolerate nighttime cold temperatures like below 50 degrees, right. and they're going to be fine. No damage. So broccoli away, cauliflower away, cabbage away, and I, kale away. I've done the kale, kale too, and that's gorgeous, and it looks amazing in, in the garden. It sure does. Yeah, yeah. This is also a good time here in April for peas. Um, it's another quick maturing crop. Um, they complete the growing season by early summer. And so if you plant these in, in the ground as soon as, um, you know, it, you, it's feeling like early spring, the nighttime cold air does not harm the peas, right? And once the pods start reaching maturity, um, you know, the, the plants will be set to have some new pods through the warm weather. Do you like peas? I love peas. I, you know, the snap peas especially. It's so fun to eat. What about onions? Have you done them? I have not done onions. This is a good time for onions. It sure is. And, you know, they don't really reach maturity until like mid to late summer. So this is a good time to do it now. And and I'll tell you, there's something about onions that the health properties are, are unfounded. It's amazing. How it is. It's incredible. You would like, think. You read all these websites on health and nutrition and stuff, and they're like, onions and mushrooms. I mean, basically are like the cancer, cancer fighting things. Antioxidants, yeah. They're, yeah. they're amazing. Well, when you think of uh, different, you know, ethnic foods from all over the world, I mean, it's all about the onion and the garlic, sure right? Sure yeah. You see? And, but I always feel like I never have enough onions because I think everything I make has an onion. I agree with you. So if I, you were going to grow them. Yeah, you got to grow a whole mess of them. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honey, we've got an onion farm going on in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, it would be kind of disappointing to only have one onion. Yeah, because and it's it not the most attractive crop in the world yeah. either, you know. But, boy, is it, you know, the return's amazing. Maybe you put this in the side yard yeah. off to, you know, pour a little 
poor little onions yeah. off to the side. Carrots. This is a good time for spring and carrots. Have you grown carrots? I before? have grown carrots. You and, have. and they when they when you pull them out, they're amazing because really? you never know what you're going to get. You know, you pull the stalk out and then you get a little short squat one. And, and then, then you get a long, jumbo? Thin, yeah, it's, really? I love doing the carrots, yeah. Because I know that when you're making your, your various meats in the crock pot, yes. it's lovely to have, oh a, my like, goodness. you know, if you're making a roast, put the onions and the carrots yep. and the celery and let those juices. Did I tell you about the pork butt I did last week? You did. Oh, What, what so did you good. put in there? What was the just, seasoning? I just did basil, uh, salt, and, not basil, I'm sorry. I did um, Paprika? Uh, uh, dill, oregano? Dill, dill. Dill, salt and pepper, garlic, olive oil, brown it. Throw it in there 12 hours later. Bam. Slow cook. A couple of carrots and potatoes. Wow. Yum. Car- Carnita City. <laughs> so the idea is if you were to have all these vegetables in your own spring garden, just think of the money that you would save and how, how neat to be able to enjoy that. Now, by the way, you don't have to have a big garden. I hope that you will be considering a, a container garden of this because a lack of space shouldn't keep you um, from enjoying growing veggies in early spring, you know? It's difficult to grow large vegetables, like corn. Yeah. But yeah. lettuce is okay. Sure. You can make salad in a bowl right there, right? The tomatoes, you've done tomatoes in a, in a container, yeah. right? Every and year you, I do. And you get those little towers, the teepee towers? I have the teepee towers, yeah. Yeah, I, lo- I, I just love, and the different varieties, you know, you get your beef steaks and your batter boys and all the different kinds that you want, your, your heirlooms if you want to do that. There's nothing like August, Sliced heirlooms, yep. buffalo mozzarella, olive oil, little basil, fresh. But like I'm, I'm like losing my. I, I know. can't talk anymore. I'm <laughs> getting so crazy. You're getting for clumps. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, in containers, be thinking right now of lettuce, tomatoes, um, maybe even squash, uh, carrots. Those are all yeah. Those are luscious not, things. Not difficult to grow in a container. So what you would need is your container. Uh, you can get the small little plants, or you could do seeds. And then some great potting soil. What you do need to know, though, is the amount of sun that you have. Because that's the key yeah. for growing edibles. You're going to need to have, you know, at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. Right. Especially for tomatoes and bell peppers. So that can be disappointing. If you live in a shady area, you don't, you have six hours in your backyard, Easily, right? yeah. I sometimes have to obscure More, yeah. some of these plants because they get fried a little bit with the sun, direct so, sun. So if step one, if you are thinking of doing an edible garden right now for spring in containers, let's say you just have a small patio or balcony or whatever, think about the amount of space that you can use. You can use 10-inch pots. Sure. You know? Yeah, uh, you want the depth. If if you're gonna do carrots, five, five gallon exactly. You want yeah. the big. You can use the small ten inches for herbs and green onions. Right. Uh, which, by the way, we've talked about how you can buy a green onion at the store, chop it off, right, and right. put it in the soil That's and it. keep and regrowing your onions. And you know what? I, I want to also mention the cucumbers. If you don't harvest the cucumbers, the best early. Huh? Yeah, they get, they get mushy. Kind of, well, no, they get uh, they get little thorny on on the outside, oh. and they're not Ew. as delicious. Oh, I wouldn't want You want, want them a little a little smaller and more tender. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. want thorns. No. that's not a very good Greek salad yeah, at all. No, it's with terrible. thorns, it'll, it'll pierce your the roof of your mouth. It's an aggressive <laughs> Greek salad. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Aggressive. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think if you are thinking of tomatoes, uh, eggplant, peppers, you're going to want to have at least a five gallon container. So heads yeah. up for those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, you know, you want to have at least six hours of sun. Another step is make sure that you have those drainage holes. Have you ever tried to put edibles or any kind of a garden flower shrub? You put it in a container and you forgot that there was no hole in the bottom. It gets kind of rotty. The Terrible. Roots, the roots go on you. Nothing really happens. So make sure that when you buy your containers, if they don't have a drainage hole, what's a good tool to use? You can use a a, 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 bit. Ma- a masonry drill Ma- bit, you know, and you want to have a spray bottle or a garden hose hitting, hitting it with water as you're drilling slowly. So it won't crack. So it won't crack, and it'll keep the temperature down on the drill bit. Okay. That's the way to do it. We will put all this on the website, as always. Thanks to our friends at Bayard Vance. Better science, better results at BayardVance.com. You're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve your life.